choose the key of F. Nobody likes to play in the key of F. Bring up Oliver here. Come on, Fred. So we're playing some octaves here. Octave. Two of the same notes. I.E. C and C. But they're eight notes apart. Or F and F. So here's F, and here's F, roughly. Top of the scale, bottom of the scale. And if you play them twice, if you play them both at the same time, like this, that means you're playing octaves. So, it's like an octave pedal, except you don't need a pedal. Anyway, the way I'm doing it is, uh, see, I have that. And that's pretty much what I'm following. No, I think I follow the high one. But um, I grab both notes, and my first finger mutes. And so, and then I'm, I'm just real strategic. So I don't hit all those strings. linear, meaning I'm going up and down a string. And those are cool. I mean, you know, if you look back at uh, jazz players, uh, and especially Wes Montgomery, Wes Montgomery is famous for octaves. He played them with his thumb, like this. Within a cage system, if you want any of the ones that you want, you can do um, now. Here's the thing when you get away from the first and second string, uh, fourth finger area, now the next one's down or third string, so the octave collapses, so it's, it's only two frets apart instead of three. Oh, good catch. Okay, so. So, um, that's used a lot in jazz music. Can be used in blues music, can be used in, hey, bring it over here. Um, can be used in rock music, funk music, whatever. I used to teach those kids, um, like Blink-182 songs, I think it was what it was. But those folks who used octaves all the time, they'd be like. Or whatever they would do. A really good example of it in contemporary guitar music is uh, from Eric Johnson, AVM Musicom. 
uh, a song called East West. I'll play a little clip of it right here. So that's octaves. Uh, somebody asked about those, so I thought I'd start off with that. That's a C chord. There's so many things you can do with that shape. Um, I'm just going to focus in on that C form today. I'm in the key of A minor right now. Yeah. But that's G form. So if we move up to see where the A is on the fifth string. That's putting us in C form. Right? And so I might have talked about this before, but it doesn't hurt to go over it again. Um, anything that you can do in the regular pentatonic blues scale. Why is a lot of sun behind me, huh? So we can have these. So we take it up here. It's all still there, right? Uh, it's just up on the next string, so that's easy, right? But um, so we're key of C. What if the band goes to an F? Which is the four chord. So you're still in this shape. But you can grab the chord. See? Same as down here. back to the C chord. It's right there. What if we go to the G chord? That's all there too. And all of those notes are in the C scale. That's the four chord. Five chord. That's the one chord. It's all real simple. You just have to know the chords down here. One chord, four chord, five chord, one chord. How about six chord? It's a lot like the one chord. The only difference is A. Even so, A is the sixth of the one chord. If you don't understand what I meant by that, just count up six from the root C, and you're on the A. 
So if you're playing a C chord, it's true that there's not an A in it, but if you play it like this, it's a C6 and there is an A in it. The same exact chord as A minor with a C bass note. Great stuff. Okay, so let's play an A minor chord. There it is, and we can do this. See, there's my... My A arpeggio or broken chord. Um, the A minor is what I meant to say. And I add the G in too. Because I like the seventh in minor chords. It doesn't hurt them. Ha! Ah, you missed. All right. So, so far we've got our one chord. We've got our four chord. I keep putting extra notes in, I'm sorry. And we got our five chord. Extra notes, sorry. And now we have the six chord. What else do we need? How about three chord? Anybody know what it is? Who can tell me what the three chord is? It's E minor. Let's do an E minor. It's almost like G. Here's G. But here's E minor. Only difference between G and E minor is the E, which is what in G? E is the sixth. So even G6 is an E minor chord. Same thing. Same notes, just rearranged, put in different context. Now we have <laughs> I don't have to start on the C for it to be a C chord. Hope everybody understands that. I'm just playing all the notes in this position that belong to the C chord. Like E, G, well it's just C, E, and G. So here's E, G, C, E, G, C, E, G. Okay? If you want to put in a B, make it sound colorful and jazzy, you can do that. It's always fun. I know. So it's C chord, here's the F chord. Okay, here's the G chord. Here's the A minor chord. And where were we next? The E minor chord. What about this chord? <laughs> That's a great chord. It's a B. half diminished. It's a tricky fingering too, look. First finger, then the third finger just one fret up on the next string, then the second finger on the same fret as the first finger, and then the fourth finger on the same fret as the third finger. So you get this. So the notes in that chord are B, D, F, and A. I've talked before on other videos, if you look way back, some of my blues videos, I talk about this, um, this chord because it's great. Uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan used it. Uh, let's stop that. See? 
But he wasn't using it as a half diminished. He was using it as a ninth chord. It's the same. I'll talk about that another time. That's a big can of worms. So we see, oh, we didn't do the two chord, the D minor chord. It's almost the same as F. What I say about minor chords, I always like to put in the seventh. Looks like I put in a ninth too. So this is the chord right here. That's that chord. So they're all there. I'm gonna go inside, because it's cold as can be out here. And I love my cardigan, but it's not cutting it. So we're going in. Mm -hmm.